Okay, so we are live now on YouTube. Uh, namaste and good evening to everybody. On behalf of Indian section, I welcome all of you to today's session on Mahatma Letters, which will be directed by Professor C. A. Shinde. So let us begin today's session with the universal invocation. <clears throat> o hidden life, vibrant in every atom, O hidden light, shining in every creature. O hidden love, embracing all in oneness. May each who feels himself as one with thee, know he is also one with every other. So welcome to all of you once again. And I would like to introduce our speaker, Professor C.A. Shinde. Uh, Professor Shinde, he is a veteran member of the Theosophical Society since 1975. Presently, he is the International General Council, General member Council and the Executive Council member of the Theosophical Society. He is the international speaker and also national lecturer of Indian section. Formerly, he was the chief librarian at Adyar Library and Research Center up till January of this year. Most of us know Professor Shinde very well, and he's a, his talks are a source of inspiration to us all. He retired as professor of zoology, uh, where he worked in Sangli and Pune for nearly 37 years. And he has authored almost 10 textbooks in zoology for undergraduate students. He, is, uh, he has been the president of Marathi Theosophical Federation for two terms. And as the national lecturer, he has conducted many seminars, workers training camp, school of wisdom classes, and study classes throughout India. He also visited Sri Lanka and Crotona as an international speaker. His articles have been published in The Theosophist, Wake Up India, Theosophical Digest, The Indian Theosophist, and many other Federation journals. Professor Shinde has participated in international symposiums during the International Convention at Adyar and given many short talks. The Watchtower articles of our former international president, Mrs. Radha Bernier, they have been compiled by Professor Shinde and published as a book, which is titled The World Around Us. I'm sure many of you have read it. Professor Shinde resides with his wife at Adyar, though at present he's in Sangli. And there he is, as I mentioned, the general counsel and uh, the executive council member. He formerly served as the chief librarian up till January 2023 at the Adyar Library and Research Center. And he also served as the head of Department of Editorial Office and Secretary of Alcott Memorial High School. Professor Shinde, we know, we see him regularly participating in various activities of TS and ES. With these words, I welcome Professor Shinde to conduct today's class and enlighten us with his insightful words. Thank you. Thank you, Vibhaji. And very much thank you for all participants who are attending online. Really, it is a great pleasure to be with you all, at least online. Um, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Kanaji. Some voice is there. Well, we are from the Indian section, we are making efforts to understand deeply the letter Mahatma letters. We all are initially attracted towards Theosophical Society because of these precipitations and exhibitions of occult powers in the society. But in fact, we forget that the masters want a real universal brotherhood, 
real universal fraternity that is the first priority of the masters of the wisdom and to achieve this objective they have instructed us get hold of intellectuals get hold of the highest minds and highest mind in the sense spiritually in a high state and educationally important to help others so both development is required intellectual development as well as the spiritual development is required and those who are in such a state get hold of them and propagate theosophy to them whatever theosophical knowledge we have they all are from the uh, letters of the masters of the wisdom and also the same is inspired to h p blavatsky to write secret doctrine and isis unveiled so there is hope for man of course for man only since there is a spiritual light burning in the human being and it is only for us to realize it and act accordingly so occult phenomenon is not the main aim that is what we must understand which is not necessary if real brotherhood is part of our way of our living and whatever masters letters have come they have come as a written proof as well as they are impressed or precipitated and after precipitation process carefully all mistakes are corrected and then we have published these le masters letter later on not now but recently we have published in the sense with the permission of them and now it is our it is our way to think on it and deeply what i want to tell is the masters letter is not easy to understand their statements we must uh, try to go and try to understand the hidden things between the lines so we are asked to read between the lines the masters ask in the letter will you be my coworker as at all events the holy lamp of spiritual light is burning in us and therefore with that burning light in you will you be my coworker it may be dim light but it is a hope for you and for me also all these letters they show us evidence that the decisions to start the theosophical society and this is the theosophical society working at the highest level by the inner government their intention is to start an organization of the highest minds especially like minded people like hearted people having the same goal to bring the uh, or to form the nucleus of universal brotherhood thus forming the universal fraternity or universal brotherhood so their intention is to start an organization of the highest minds only such organization is primarily meant for for the coming sub race and what is the hallmark of that sub race the hallmark of this sub race is cooperation and inclusiveness in which we are lacking instead of cooperation we are competing instead of inclusiveness we are forming our own group we are exclude many things 
So the hallmark of the sub race, which is to form coming sub race, is cooperation and inclusiveness. So when universal fraternity is the aim, that must be the bedrock for such institution, for the theosophical society. And then that provides the platform for the coming uh, sub race to really bring or get holding the intellectuals. So original state of universal brotherhood, Master Cage writes to A.P. Sinek in a letter, in one of the letter he writes, Chief want a brotherhood of humanity, a real, cell, real universal fraternity need to be started through an institution which would make itself known throughout the world. So this is our responsibility. And the chief wants such institution that could attract the attention of the highest minds. So when I am telling these highest minds, what kind of mind we have? In fact, we are very much towards the rewards, towards the recognition and defending for the same thing. When Vibhaji was uh, introducing me, me with the kind words, I was thinking and I reminded what Krishnamurti told us. He said, to be nothing is a great power. Power to be nothing is the highest power. And this is what in the light on the path also it is said. Desire, power to be nothing. And Krishnamurti asked, why are you afraid of nothing? Why are you afraid of nothing? Why are you afraid of nothing? And then he says, why are you afraid of nothing? Which you are. In fact, we are nothing. Just like a speck dust in the whole universe. And still, we want to become something. And power to be nothing is very important. When Vibhaji was explaining my all career, just I was thinking, can I become nothing in the eyes of people? That is also very important. So let us now begin with our letter. I, uh, because we have to finish this letter when we are reading together. Actually, you may understand more than me also when we read together because collective consciousness helps us to understand more. So this Mahatma letters to A.P. Sinek and in this letter it is actually discussion is there about the Hume's delusion, Brahma and Hearn's probation. These are the two things very uh, deeply discussed. Hume's delusion and Hearn's probation. We are actually, why we are in the delusion? Why Hume is in delusion? Of course, Fern is in the period of probation. He may, may, may do mistakes. But why Hume? Hume is, in that sense, intellectually evolved and really dedicated, service-minded, and who worked for the uh, freedom of India. He is the father of Indian National Congress. All this we know. A.P. Sinek, actually. Hume is the very great-minded people. So Hume's delusion and Fern's probation. Hume's delusion because when we think of why we are under delusion, the delusion is a kind of Brahm we call in Sanskrit. Actually, this is because of our uh, dominance of the lower mind. We are under the dominance of lower mind. Lower mind always misunderstands. Whereas, higher mind understands. And everyone is influenced by the lower mind in this Kali Yuga. And therefore, Hume's misunderstanding about the pearls who is on the probation, 
all this letter goes on this two things humes delusion and firms probation this is what we see in everywhere even in politics even in all institutions we are misunderstanding misunderstanding is the function of intellect whereas understanding is the function of the intuition so we are not using our intuition we are using our intellect though we are intellectually high we are not in that position of discussing or understanding each other so let us go the next slide vibhaji next slide please ha huh, here it says i am the wh wh means warren hastings who is this warren hastings warren hastings was a clerk in east india company and this east india company is referred by the mahatma letters it is again important because they were looking to the activities of the uh, british company and this warren hastings was a clerk in the east india company though he is a clerk he was intellectually high and he raised himself with his activities and was the become the first governor general of british india with his but he was very aggressive warren hastings was very aggressive in nature and but he reformed and rebuilt the british prestige and therefore he was uh, regarded very nicely in his absence there was again gossiping and that great gossip though sometimes he appears rascal for the east india company but he himself says i was never one for myself i work for the company though i am appearing like a rascal so the the sentence says i am the warren hastings for the sins of brotherhood but to fact sometimes i am rude but to the fact i did for the company's prestige of course you know the oil means old lady it is men referred to hp blavatsky of course you know hp blavatsky told you i think that when we take candidates for chelas they take the vow of secrecy and silence respecting every order they may receive one has to prove himself fit for stella sim before he can find out whether he is fit for a adapt seat or not her is under such probation and a nice mess they have prepared for me between them two to here on one side ap senet was there on the other side eo hume was there and there was always uh, it is a mess for the fern who is in between them we know well about the fern because he is a candidate for the chelasi what we have to understand from this when we are on the probation period we all are and we have joined the theosophical society means we are on the probation period like fern so our struggles should be strong not for ourselves but for the world say constant eye to the ideal of human progression and perfection that is what it is needed then struggle to be wise we must develop intellectually also not for ourselves but for the world uh, benefit and we must struggle to purify ourselves for the whole world so that the whole world will be nearer to the uh, the purity that is expected and we must also care not for our own joy but 
a little help, little help we may bring to the world. So this is what any agent says, what a probationer should develop in him. Struggle to be strong, struggle to be wise, struggle to be pure, and care not for your own joy, but for the joy of the whole world. This is what a probationer must keep in his mind so that he can work. So, therefore, I am the Warren Hastings. Though sometimes appear rascal for the company, I was never one for myself. This is what the uh, Hastings says. Next slide we go because we have to finish many slides here. And I don't think in one sitting we finish all this. Here, Master M bamboozled him so well, indeed, that whereas uh, Hume did not believe one word when Fern was speaking the truth, nearly every lie uttered by Fern was accepted by our respected president of the electric as gospel truth. Here, electric is the uh, large name in Simula and the president of the electric, uh, the gospel truth. So this is what uh, Thorne was a sandwich between these people. And uh, actually, Master M. Sir Chela was the Thorne and therefore uh, Hume was quite silent not much speaking, but he silently believed one word when Fern was speaking the truth nearly every lie uttered by Fern. So he was just accepting. It is impossible for me to try and set him uh, Hume right. That is what Master M says. Uh, Hume is so intellectually high and so proud and so passionate. And Master himself says, for me to try and set him right, since Fern is Master's Chela and that I have no right, whatever, either legal or social, according to our code, to interfere between the two. So here again, Fern was protected by the Master Yam. And therefore, you could not uh, set him right. So what I want to say here, once Master M said to all those whom this may concern, to the honorable and doubting company, especially East India Company, foolish are the hearts who doubt of our existence or of the powers our community is in the possession uh, for ages and ages, would that you would open your hearts to the perception of the blessed truth and obtain the truths of the arrestship, if not in this, then in another and better rebirth. Who is for us? Answer. That is what Master M is aimed. Actually, they want to uh, request us. So that in this life, you can do something and instead of doubting some company foolish are the hearts who are doubting. For them, Master M has said in one of the other letters. Now in the next slide, uh, we can go to the next slide. So here, another of our customs, when corresponding with the Outside world is to entrust a chela with the task of delivering the letters or any other messages. And if not absolutely necessary, to never give it a thought. Very often our very letters, unless something very important and secret, are written in our handwritings by our chelas. So here again, many letters are sent by 
must get through his chela, especially Jalkul. And sometimes Jalkul was given to the fur to hand over the letter to Hume. And when the letter was given to Hume, Hume was annoyed. How is that the Pern is my attendant and how he is given this letter when there is so much secrecy and uh, why he is giving so important, all such kind of misunderstanding were there. In that context, all these letters are uh, written to correct Hume. His uh, delusion has to be removed and Fern being on the probation, he need to be protected. Thus, last year, some of my letters to you were precipitated. And when sweet and easy pre uh, precipitation was stopped, well, I had but to compose my mind, assume an easy position, and think, and my faithful uh, disinherited had but to copy my thoughts, making only occasionally a blunder. So here, this inherited is referred to uh, Jalkul, DK, who is the chela of Master Kej. And he is called disinherited because he was actually, Jalkul was disinherited by his family. And when he became a first degree chela, that time he was disinherited by his family. But later on, even Jalkul also became an adept. So adept becomes not made. And in the same manner, before adept is saved, there is a probationary ship. And here Master Kies says, sometimes my thoughts are carried by the disinherited and they are copied thoughts. Sometimes he makes mistakes or blunder. Otherwise, he pass on those thoughts which are to be passed on to the uh, AP Cine. So next slide. Anyhow, this year, for reason we need not mention, I have to do my own work, the whole of it. And I have a hard time of it sometimes and get impatient over it. As Jean Paul Richard says, somewhere he has said, that is quoted, the most painful part of our bodily pain is that which is bodiless or immaterial, namely our impatience and the delusions that it will last forever. So this is what they were worried. Your impatience, your delusions are most painful on our uh, higher or higher sides, especially at a higher level. When we study the laws of higher life, on those level, these are uh, delusions and impatience are very painful for them. These are not bodily or immaterial, but bodily they are immaterial. But what you think, what you feel, what you misunderstand, that disturbs us much. That is what the concern they said. Then we go to the next slide. Uh, having one day permitted myself to act as though I were laboring under such delusion in the innocence of my unsophisticated soul. I trusted the sacredness of my correspondence into the hands of that alter ego of mine, the wicked and imperious chap, you were illustri illustrious, who took undue advantage of my confidence in him and placed me in the position I am now in. This again uh, regarding the Hume and uh, Hearn. 
because when the secrecy is asked, this delusion itself made him uh, annoying to the human. The wretch laughed since yesterday, and to confess the truth, I feel inclined to do the same. But as an Englishman, I am afraid you will be terror struck at the enormity of his crime. Sometimes we are unable to be patient because of our misunderstanding. And that is what it happened to the Hume. Even if a fern is under chelaship or on the probation, whatever he was doing, it is really annoying to the Hume. We'll go to the next slide. I am going fast because so many things are there to understand and read them again and again. You know that notwithstanding his faults, Mr. Hume is absolutely necessary so for the Theosophical Society. I grow sometimes very irritated at his petty feelings and spirit of vindictiveness. Yet, withal, I have to put up with his weaknesses, which lead him at one moment to vex himself that it is not yet, and at another that it is already midday. But our illustrious is not precisely of that opinion. Mr. Hume's pride and self-opinion, he argues, his wish, as our saying goes, that all mankind had only two bent knees to make puja to him and he, Yam, is not going to humor him. See, here, I also found really wonderful uh, insight because the human being can uh, bend his knees. Only human species can bend its knees. And when I am studying the human evolution, and here I found uh, that all mankind had only two bent knees. So whenever in ritual, in initiation, in many rituals, we are asked to kneel on uh, down on our knees, kneel on knees. So these bent knees are very important. And why they are made? To make puja to him. Here again, puja shabd is used. That means we have to be humble. As human beings, as human species, we have to be humble. We can't be rude. Anyway, we must kneel. They are just like slaves. It may be appear like this, but these bent news, that is what Master Yam says, all mankind had only two bent knees to make puja to him and he, Yam, is not going to hammer him. This is what a new thing I found. We have bent knees to kneel down. Only then there will be what we say initiation. What we say the we unfold our consciousness to the different dimension. Unless you kneel down, there will not be any initiation as such. There will not you can't pass that. Uh, barrier of intellect to intuition. And further in the next uh, letter, uh, he will do nothing, of course, to harm or even to vex him purposely. On the contrary, he means to always protect him as he has done until now, but he will not lift his little finger to disabuse him. The substance and pith of his argument are summed up in the following. 
Hume laughed and chuckled at real, genuine phenomena, the production of which have brought us well high into the Chohan's disgrace. So Hume, he said, because of his delusion uh, at the Chohan's side, uh, he was uh, generally, he become, what we can say, disgrace for, to himself. Only and solely because the manifestations were not sketched by himself, nor were they produced in his honor or for his sole benefit. So when he humes knows whatever is happening, happening according to the divine plan, happening not according to his will, but according to the will of uh, divine plan. So when he understood that one, then in the next uh, letter, it is in the next slide. We can, huh? no one has ever attempted a deliberate deception, nor would anyone be permitted to attempt anything of the sort. Everything was made to follow its natural, orderly course. Fern is in the hands of two clever dwellers of the threshold, as uh, Bulwar would call them, two Dukpas. Dukpas kept by us to do our scavengers' work and to draw out the latent vices, if there be any from the candidates. And Fern has shown himself on the whole far better and more moral than he was supposed to be. Really, it is a good. Here we have to understand what are these dukpas, and uh, you may call them as the dukpas, generally referred to a magician, but left hand magicians. Dukpas are the magicians and left hand magicians. Means they are removing scavengers. You see, our ants are the scavengers. Actually, ants are doing the work of removing all that is degenerating in the nature. So, in the same manner, Dukpa generally referred to a magician, but of left hand magicians. And right hand magicians are called Gelupas. Gelupas are Gelupas. They are the referred as yellow caps. Especially, this is the Buddhist right-hand magicians. These are the Gelupas and Dukpas. So here, for the firm, two, two scavengers were kept. They were removing his vices. And to remove vices, lot of opportunity to do mistake was there for the firm. And he was doing mistake. From the mistake, he was learning. And therefore, he was supposed to be uh, morally developed better in their hands of those dukpas. So this is what we can, next we can go. Because I have to finish within 10 minutes. Last slide, we finish this one. And then I will conclude. Fern has done but what he was ordered to do. And he holds his tongue because it is his first duty. So we must be very careful what to speak. Speak only true, uh, which is beneficial. All these qualities need to be developed. As to his posing with Hume and attitudinalizing before himself and others as a seer, since he has brought himself to believe it, and that it is but certain details that can be really called a fiction 
or to put it less mildly, fibs, there is no real harm done but to himself. So Hume's jealousy, Hume's pride will ever be in the way to prevent him swallowing truth as much as ornamental fiction. And Sinet is shrewd enough to shift very easily Fern's realities and dreams. So in the next, I will read this up to next two slides and then I will conclude. Why then should I or you or anyone else conclude Master M offer advice to one who is sure not to accept it or which will be still worse in case he learns for a certainty that he has been permitted to make a fool of himself he is still more sure to become an irreconcilable enemy to the society, the cause, the much suffering, founders and all. Let him then strictly allow. He will not be thankful for undeceiving him. On the contrary, he will forget that no one is to be blamed but himself. That no one had ever whispered him one word that could have led him into his extra delusion. Next slide again. But, but will turn more tirelessly than ever on those chap, the adepts, and he will call them publicly imposters, gestures, and pretenders. You gave him one genuine pakka phenomena, and that ought to satisfy him as to the possibility of everything else. Such is Yam's reasoning and where I not indirectly mixed in the cube, it would be also mine. But now, owing, these all are the instructions to the Hume's. We cannot change the Hume. But Master Yam says, give him one genuine pakka phenomena so that he can understand. But now, owing to the plans of that little double-dealing monkey, Fern. So, Fern is double-dealing monkey. He called double-dealing monkey. Uh, I request everyone to please mute their mic. But please now, Daniel. moving to the plants of that little double dealing monkey, Pur, I am compelled to disturb you for a friendly mm -hmm. advice since our ways are not our ways and vice versa. So finally, it is said, our ways are not your ways and vice versa. So here again, I remember, come into your, our world, live your world and come into our world. So their world is entirely different. And when we are thinking of the inner government, when we are thinking of the brotherhood, when we are thinking of the cooperation and understanding, so their world is difficult to understand unless we raise ourselves to that buddhic level and crossing the threshold of the intellect. That is why they use, I give you friendly advance since our ways are not your ways and vice versa. And finally, last one slide I read and then I will conclude with some note. So Hume has lately received a good many letters from me and I hope you will kindly follow with me the fate and various fortunes of three of them ever since he began to receive them in a direct way. Try also to well understand the situation and to thus realize my position since we had three chelas at Simla, two regular chelas and one and an irregular one, the candidate Fern. 
I conceived the unfortunate idea of saving power of economizing as though I had a savings bank. So what we learn from this letter, just to conclude, what we learn from the Pern incident, One thing we should not blame or cry for the persons who hurt us when we are on the spiritual path. But if, uh, but it is actually an opportunity or a chance for us to find someone better than him. So when somebody hurts us, that gives an opportunity to us to be better. So for such probation period, what is required is purity in heart. Unless there is purity in heart, you won't get the opportunity to develop morally and spiritually. There has to be clarity in the mind. Without clarity in mind, we undergo misunderstanding. We undergo uh, missing the opportunities. And therefore, we cannot build our character. So clarity in mind is essential for building character. Purity in heart is essential for getting real opportunities to take a step ahead. And Besides these two, what is needed is sincerity. Sincerity in action it is only such sincerity in action naturally creates our environment which is suitable for us to develop. Otherwise, lazy habits must be seriously dealt with. So, what is necessary is thought of love and thought of compassion only makes us enthusiastic on the path of spirituality. So to take a step forward, always one must forget the problems that one faces, but to learn lessons from those problems. So respect was the foundation for Pern. Pern was misunderstood by many, but he was respecting everyone. And that is important. Respect was the foundation for the pearl of any relationship. So when we are in the probation period, we have to be sincere, honest, patient, and to make the mind a learning mind. Mind learns more than reading, being associated with the great ones. So. Uh, that is why HPP says, keep the link unbroken. Unless you are associated with that, unless your mind is linked with your own burning lamp within you, you cannot learn the lessons. Hearn, in that sense, has a mind that was thinking. He was having heart that is feeling. He had that intellect of imagination and experiencing. and. Uh, what was and is happening, although to him he has become a uh, sandwich between AO Hume and AP Senate, who were actually communicate uh, actually they were communicating through letters of the masters of the wisdom, and therefore he was respecting to them. But he was sandwiched between them. Hearn was simply witnessing all this. Sometimes he was asked to hand over the letters, as I said to you, to Evo Hume. But by such actions, Evo Hume was his boss getting annoyed and disturbing. So this is what the letter, whole letter, is what we have discussed. It is about the delusion of Evo Hume and the probationary period of war that gives some hints for us to treat the spiritual path.
Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I don't know whether I have understood it clearly or not. Whatever I have understood, I have put those thoughts before you. And you can read it. And uh, with reference to with what context that is said is can be discussed. Thank you very much, Vibhaji, for giving me nice, kind words of introduction. Thank you very much to all of you for attending. And now you can... Yes, yeah. thank you, sir. Thank you for explaining this part of the letter. And I will request Minakshi ji to give us the translation in Hindi before we can go on for discussion. Namaste. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Shinde Kaka. Thank you. Aaj hum chronological letter number 75 le rahe hai, jo ki master ke H AP Senate ko likhte hai. Yaha patra, Hume ka bhram, और फर्म का प्रोबेशन इस पर आधारित है मास्टर के एज सीनेट से कहते हैं मुझे लगता है कि ओल्ड लेडी यानी एचपीबी ने आपको यहां बताया है कि जब हम साधकों को यानी कैंडिडेट्स को चेला के रूप में लेते हैं तब उन्हें प्राप्त होने वाले प्रत्येक आदेश का सम्मान करते हुए वे गोपनीयता और चुप्पी रखने की प्रतिज्ञा लेते हैं सिद्धत्व के लिए वह उपयुक्त है या नहीं यह जानने से पूर्व उसे चेला पद के लिए उपयुक्तता साबित करनी होगी फर्न जो कि एओ ह्यूम के सेक्रेटरी थे वे ऐसे ही प्रोफेशन पर है ऐसा मास्टर कहते हैं मास्टर एम ने ह्यूम को इतने अच्छे से भ्रमित किया कि वास्तव में जब फर्न सच बोल रहा था तब ह्यूम का उसके एक शब्द उसके एक भी शब्द पर विश्वास नहीं था यानी फर्न के एक भी शब्द पर विश्वास नहीं था इकलेक्टिक के सम्माननीय प्रेसिडेंट ने फर्न द्वारा बोले गए लगभग प्रत्येक झूठ को धर्म सत्य मानकर स्वीकार किया मेरे लिए उसे सही करने की कोशिश करना असंभव है क्योंकि फर्न मास्टर एम के चेला है और हमारे नियमानुसार मुझे उन दोनों के बीच चाहे कानूनी या सामाजिक किसी भी तरह का हस्तक्षेप करने का कोई अधिकार नहीं है हमारी एक और कार्य पद्धति है कि भौतिक जगत से पत्र व्यवहार करने के लिए चेला पर पत्र पहुंचाने का या कोई संदेश पहुंचाने का काम सौंपना और बहुत ही अनिवार्य न हो तो बिना किसी सोच विचार के यह करना यदि बहुत महत्वपूर्ण और गोपनीय न हो तो अक्सर हमारे पत्र चेलाओं द्वारा हमारी लिखावट में लिखे जाते हैं इस प्रकार पिछले साल आपके लिए मेरे कुछ पत्र अवक्षेपित थे प्रेसिपिटेटेड थे और जब सुखद और आसान अवक्षेपन को थामा गया तब मुझे मेरे दिमाग को शांत करना था सहज स्थिति में विचार करना था और <coughs> और मेरे निष्ठावान डिस इनहेरिटेड यानी मास्टर ज्वालपुल को और उस समय उनके शिष्य थे उनको आ, मेरे विचार की बस नकल करनी थी कभी कभार एक हाथ गलती हो जाती थी खैर इस साल किन्हीं कारणों से जिसका उल्लेख करने की आवश्यकता नहीं है मुझे स्वयं अपना काम कर आ, अपना संपूर्ण काम करना होगा कभी कभी मेरे लिए यह कठिन समय होता है और उसके लिए मैं अधीर हो जाता हूँ जैसे कि जीन पॉल रिक्टर ने कही लिखते हैं कि हमारे शारीरिक दर्द का सबसे पीड़ादायक हिस्सा वह है जो शरीरहीन या अमूर्त है अर्थात हमारी अधीरता और हमारा भ्रम कि यह हमेशा के लिए रहेगा आगे मास्टर कहते हैं मिस्टर ह्यूम के दोषों के बावजूद वे टी एस यानी थियोसॉफिकल सोसाइटी के लिए बेहद जरूरी है उनकी क्षुद्र भावनाओं से और प्रतिशोध की भावनाओं से मैं कभी कभी बहुत चिढ़ जाता हूँ फिर भी मुझे उनकी कमजोरियों को झेलना होगा जो उसे एक पल खुद को परेशान करती है और दूसरे पल उस पर हावी हो जाती है लेकिन हमारे इलस्ट्रियस यानी मास्टर एन बिल्कुल ही उस मत के नहीं है वे कहते हैं कि मिस्टर ह्यूम का अहम भाव और खुद के बारे में उनके विचार इस तरह है जैसे कि हमारे यहाँ कहावत है कि सभी मनुष्यों को केवल दो मुड़े हुए घुटने हैं जो उसकी पूजा करने के लिए हैं। 
बेशक वे जानबूझकर उसे नुकसान पहुंचाने या परेशान करने के लिए कुछ भी नहीं करेंगे इसके विपरीत वे उसका सदैव रक्षण करेंगे जैसे कि उन्होंने अब तक किया है लेकिन वे उसे ठीक करने के लिए उंगली तक नहीं उठाएंगे मास्टर एम उनके युक्तिवाद का सारांशन इस तरह से है केवल इसीलिए कि वह प्रकटीकरण उसके द्वारा वर्णित नहीं थे न ही वे उसके सम्मान में या एकमात्र उसके लाभ के लिए निर्मित किए गए थे ह्यूम सच्चे और खरे घटनाओं पर यानी फिनोमिना पर हंसे जिसके उत्पादन स्वरूप हम महाचौहान के सामने करीब करीब लज्जा के पात्र हुए किसी ने भी जानबूझकर छल कपट करने का प्रयास नहीं किया है और न ही किसी को ऐसा कुछ भी प्रयास करने की अनुमति दी जाएगी हर चीज को उसके नैसर्गिक सामान्य रूप से करने के लिए था फर्न दो चतुर दुखपाओं के कब्जे में है जिसे गुलवर ड्वेलर्स ऑफ द थ्रेश कहते हैं जिन्हें हमने अपने सफाई कामगार के रूप में रखा है और कैंडिडेट्स में यदि कोई छिपे हुए दोष हो तो उन्हें बाहर निकालते हैं और फर्न ने कुल मिलाकर जितना होना चाहिए था उससे भी बेहतर और नैतिक रूप से सबल स्वयं को प्रदर्शित किया फर्म को जो भी आदेश दिए गए थे उनका उसने पालन किया वह चुप रहता है क्योंकि यह उसका प्रथम कर्तव्य है चूंकि वह स्वयं को एक दृष्टा के रूप में मानता है वह ह्यूम के सामने ऐसा प्रस्तुत होता है और उसके और अन्य लोगों के साथ उस तरह से व्यवहार करता है और इनमें से कुछ बातों को मनगणंत कह सकते हैं या उसे सामान्य झूठ कहेंगे इससे उसके स्वयं के अलावा कोई नुकसान नहीं हुआ क्योंकि ईर्षा और अभिमान हमेशा उसे परिकल्पना के जितना ही सत्य को समझने के लिए आड़े आएंगे और फर्न की सत्यता और ख्यालों को आसानी से परखने के लिए सिनेट काफी समझदार है आखिर में मास्टर एम कहते हैं फिर क्यों मैं या आप या अन्य कोई किसी ऐसे व्यक्ति को सलाह दे जो निश्चित ही उसका स्वीकार नहीं करेगा या इससे भी बदतर अगर वह यकीनन जानता है कि उसे स्वयं को बेवकूफ बनाया गया तब वह निश्चित ही सोसाइटी का उसके उद्देश्य का बेहद पीड़ित संस्थापकों का और सभी का कट्टर दुश्मन बनेगा उसे फिर सख्ती से अकेले रहने दे वह स्वयं को भ्रम से मुक्ति दिलाने के लिए आभारी नहीं होगा इसके विपरीत वह भूल जाएगा कि दोष किसी और का नहीं बल्कि स्वयं उसका है कि किसी ने कभी भी उसे ऐसा एक भी शब्द नहीं कहा था जो उसे और अधिक भ्रमित करे लेकिन उन सिद्ध पुरुषों पर पहले से कहीं अधिक उग्र रूप से पलटेगा और उन्हें सार्वजनिक रूप से ढोंगी जेसुइट्स और जालसाज कहेगा आपने उसे सच्ची पक्की वाली फिनोमिना दी घटना दी और यह उसे संतुष्ट करना चाहिए जैसे कि बाकी सभी में होता है इस तरह एम के विचार है और यदि मुझे अप्रत्यक्ष रूप से इसे गलत फहमी में नहीं उलझाया तब मेरा भी ऐसा विचार होगा लेकिन अब उस पाखंडी फर्म की योजनाओं के कारण मैं आपको एक मैत्रीपूर्ण सलाह देने के लिए परेशान करने के लिए बात दे क्योंकि हमारे तरीके आपके तरीके नहीं है और आपके हमारे नहीं ह्यूम को हाल ही में मेरे बहुत सारे साउंड प्लीज थैंक यू मीनाक्षी जी आई थिंक टूवर्ड्स द एंड द साउंड वॉज नॉट ऑडिबल Or was it only on my connection? I'm not sure. No, no, sound was not there. 
last okay. one 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 page is not heard okay the last slide last slide if, if she can repeat that would be good Minakshi ji, could you repeat the last slide, please? During that time, the audio was not uh, available. We could not hear you. Yes, no, still we are not. Yeah, Minakshi ji, we still cannot hear you. Your voice is not audible. I think she's rejoining. Ah, uh, you uh, se sun nahi paaye, please. Aap mujhe bataye. I think it is the last slide, Minakshi ji. Slide number fourteen. Slide number fourteen. Okay. Uh, 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 yes, yes. For do chatur dupao ke kabze me hai. Gise bulver dwellers of threshold kate hai. Jine hamne apne safai kamgar ke rup me rakhai. Or candidates me yadi koi chipe hue dosh ho. तो उन्हें बाहर निकालते हैं और फर्न ने कुल मिलाकर जितना होना चाहिए था उससे भी बेहतर और नैतिक रूप से सबल स्वयं को प्रदर्शित किया फर्न को जो भी आदेश दिए गए थे उनका उसने पालन किया वह चुप रहता है क्योंकि यह उसका प्रथम कर्तव्य है क्योंकि वह स्वयं को एक दृष्टा के रूप में मानता है वह ह्यूम के सामने ऐसा प्रस्तुत होता है और उसके और अन्य लोगों के साथ उस तरह से व्यवहार करता है और इनमें से कुछ बातों को अनगणित कह सकते हैं या उसे सामान्य झूठ कहेंगे इससे उसके स्वयं के अलावा कोई नुकसान नहीं हुआ ह्यूम की इर्षा और अभिमान हमेशा उसे परिकल्पना के जितना ही सत्य को समझने के लिए आड़े आएंगे और फर्न की सत्यता और ख्यालों को आसानी से परखने के लिए सिनेट काफी समझदार है आखिर आखिर में मास्टर एम कहते हैं फिर क्यों मैं या आप या अन्य कोई किसी ऐसे व्यक्ति को सलाह दे जो निश्चित ही उसका स्वीकार नहीं करेगा या इससे भी बदतर अगर वह यकीनन जानता है कि उसे स्वयं को बेवकूफ बनाया गया तब वह निश्चित ही सोसाइटी का उसके उद्देश्य का बेहद पीड़ित संस्थापकों का और सभी का कट्टर दुश्मन बनेगा उसे फिर शक्ति से अकेले रहने दे वह स्वयं को भ्रम से मुक्ति दिलाने के लिए आभारी नहीं होगा इसके विपरीत वह भूल जाएगा कि दोष किसी और का नहीं बल्कि स्वयं उसका है कि किसी ने कभी भी उसे ऐसा एक भी शब्द नहीं कहा था जो उसे और अधिक भ्रमित करे लेकिन उन सिद्ध पुरुषों पर पहले से कहीं अधिक उग्र रूप से पलटेगा और उन्हें सार्वजनिक रूप से ढोंगी जैसुइट्स और जालसाज कहेगा आपने यानी के एच ने उसे सच्ची पक्की वाली फिनोमिना दी घटना दी और यह उसे संतुष्ट करना चाहिए जैसे कि वह बाकी सभी बातों में होता है इस तरह मास्टर एम के विचार है और यदि मुझे अप्रत्यक्ष रूप से इस गलत फॉर्मी में नहीं उलझाया तब मेरा भी ऐसा विचार होगा लेकिन अब उस पाखंडी फर्म की योजनाओं के कारण मैं आपको एक मैत्रीपूर्ण सलाह देने के लिए परेशान करने के लिए बाध्य हूँ क्योंकि हमारे तरीके आपके तरीके नहीं है और आपके हमारे नहीं क्यों तो हाल ही में मेरे बहुत सारे पत्र प्राप्त हुए हैं और जब से उन्होंने सीधे तौर पर पत्रों को प्राप्त करना शुरू किया मैं आशा करता हूँ कि उन तीनों के भाग्य और विभिन्न उपलब्धियों पर आप मेरे साथ निरीक्षण करेंगे परिस्थिति को अच्छी तरह से समझेंगे समझने और इस प्रकार 
मेरे वस्तुस्थिति का एहसास करने की भी कोशिश करें चूंकि शिमला में हमारे तीन चेला थे दो नित्य के और एक अस्थाई इरेगुलर कैंडिडेट फंड मैंने शक्ति को बचाने उसे कम खर्च करने का खेदजनक विचार किया जैसे कि मेरे पास बचत बैंक थैंक यू थैंक यू मीनाक्षी जी यस सो नाउ वी हैव द सेशन ओपन फॉर डिस्कशन इफ एनीबडी वुड लाइक टू एड समथिंग और इफ दे हैव एनी क्वेश्चन दे मे अनम्यूट एंड स्पीक any questions from anybody no questions sir <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> sir would you like to add something towards the end no what uh, this is all technique uh, actually uh -huh. masters they are using uh -huh. a high level technique uh -huh. to send the letters etc because they have mastery and they also have uh, moral values like reverence to the humanity and religious value like worship so all this they have given us in this letter we should have mastery our physical body though we have two knees there has to be reverence to all life morally and we have to bend ourselves worship so this is a kind of a values at a glance holistic view and timeless dimension that is what they want to inform us through such letter or such events even though when we read these something we get from such letters this is what i want to add nothing else much this is my perspective to look at these letters right thank you so much sir so we will continue this the study of this letter because it's a very long letter i think it will take uh, another two sessions okay so if there are no questions from the participants we will conclude today's session thank you all for participating and thank you sir for your time and explanation uh, we will close this session with the closing prayer सदमय तम सोम ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय स्वस्तिरभव मंगल लोक समस्ता सुखी नो सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणी पश्यन्तु मा कश्चि दुख भाग भवे ओम शांति 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 नमस्ते थैंक यू ऑल फॉर जॉइनिंग नमस्ते थैंक यू थैंक यू मालती पांडुरंग थैंक यू अतुल जी थैंक यू थैंक यू सर thank you thank you